dear students earlier we had we, we have discussed about the general introduction of the fungi in which we dealt with so many things uh, actually what fungi are then then various groups of fungi and the diseases that are caused by them in this in the present class we will be discussing about the some of the somatic structures of the fungi and then their the asexual reproduction various modes of reproduction and we will cover the asexual reproduction then one by one we will follow the sexual reproduction you all know that fungi are eukaryotic uh, heterotrophic uh, thallophytes which reproduce by various uh, means of asexual and sexual reproduction so there are some uh, general characteristics of the fungi are the, all the fungi are eukaryotic that is they possess membrane bound nuclei a range of membrane bound cytoplasmic organelles that is micro, mitochondria vacuoles endoplasmic reticulum etc most of the fungi are next most of, most of the fungi are filamentous uh, that is they composed of individual microscopic filaments called hyphae which exhibit apical growth and which uh, branch to form a network of hyphae which is called mycelium some are unicellular also like yeasts uh, and the protoplasm of a hyphae or cell is surrounded by a rigid wall which is composed of chitin and glu glucans and in some of the members of the fungi you can get the cell wall of cellulose the cell wall may contain cellulose also now many fungi reproduce both asexually and sexually that is both sexual and asexual reproduction often result in the production of the spores now their nuclei are typically haploid and hyphal compartments are often multinucleate although the oomycota and some yeast possesses diploid nuclei uh, next already i have discussed you that uh, fungi are heterotrophic that is they are a chlorophyllous they lack chlorophyll pigment and are incapable of photosynthesis so now all are all the fungi are chemoheterotrophs that is they utilize the pre existing organic source of the carbon in their environment and the energy from the chemical reactions to synthesize the organic compounds they require for growth and energy the next character says they possess the characteristic range of storage compounds like tree halos glycogen sugar alcohols and lipids and the next uh, they may be free living or may form intimate relationship with other organism you you may know that the fungi also for mutualistic relation between the uh, roots of the higher plant now regarding the the fungi thallus uh, actually the word thallophyte came that uh, from the or organism which have no differentiated root stem and leaf so undifferentiated plant part are known as thallus and the body of the fungus is known as thallus and thallus is of two kind it is eucarpic and other one is holocarpic so what is eucarpic thallus basically the thallus is differentiated into vegetative part uh, which absorbs the nut nutrient and reproductive part which form the reproductive structure such thallai are called eucarpic so when the the vegetative structure absorbs the nutrient and a part of it uh, forms the reproductive structure uh, then it is called eucarpic the example is pithium ephanidermata you can see that the uh, some part is of the fungus is producing here the the reproductive structure and other part as well is 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 taking the or drawing the nutrients from the uh, soil now the holocarp when thallus does not show any differentiation on vegetative and reproductive structure and after a phase of vegetative growth the whole body is converted into uh, one or more reproductive structure then such thallai are called holocarp like uh, the examples are yeast synchytrium synchytrium and dubiaticum you know that the earlier i told you that what is hypha 
hypha is tubular branched structure of the septate fungi having cross walls and uh, and in a septate fungi uh, uh, which is uh, lacking the cross walls and having the multinucleate condition that is known as synocytic condition so parasitic fungi, fungi have modified uh, hyphae called hostoria which penetrate the host tissue but remain outside the membrane so you can you can see here the hostoria which penetrates uh, uh, the, the in, and goes into the cell but remain outside basically what hyphae is hyphae hypha is a tubular transparent filament usually branched composed of an outer cell wall and a cavity lined or filled with protoplasm including the cytoplasm the hyphae are divided into compartments or cells by cross walls called septa so septa uh, divides the uh, divides the hyphae into various compartments and they are generally they are generally found in uh, septate fungi uh, uh, but in synocytic uh, without uh, the hyphae is with having without cross walls so hyphae of the most of the fungi major uh, uh, 5 to 10 micron in diameter so you can see uh, when the the uh, cross walls are present then it is septic and when it is absent it is synocytic and multinucleate condition is there so in synocytic hyphae you can get in in zygomycotina and oomycota where the in uh, uh, the hyphae having the cross walls or the septa Uh, then, then septate hyphae you can you can you can find it in basidiomycotina ascomycotina etc now what is basically mycelium mycelium is is the hyphal network or network of hyphae constituting the body or thallus of the fungus is called mycelium the mycelium of parasitic fungi grow on the surface of the host and is and spread between the cells and it is called if it is expressed uh, spread between the cell then it is called intercellular and if it is it is into the cell then it is called intracellular so the mycelium of the parasitic fungi which grows on the surface of the host and penetrates into the into the host cell then it is called intracellular if the mycelium is intercellular food is absorbed through the host cell wall or membrane if the mycelium penetrates into the cells and hyphal wall come into direct contact with the protoplasm the intercellular hyphae of the many fungi especially obligate parasite of the plants uh, plant like downy mildew powdery mildew and rust obtain nutrients through hostoria so uh, mycelium may be monokaryotic it may be dikaryotic so mycelium contains single nucleus then it is called uh, monokaryotic and usually forms a part of haplophage in the life cycle of fungi then dikaryotic mycelium you all know when it is uh, the presence of uh, two mycelium of uh, uh, opposite strains then it is known as dikaryotic mycelium uh, and and the mycelium containing pair of nuclei which denotes the diplophage in the life cycle of the fungi so you can see you can see here the the diplophage and the homokaryotic mycelium uh, the mycelium contains genetically when the mycelium contains the genetically identical nuclei it is called homokaryotic mycelium and when the mycelium contains the nuclei of different genetic constituent then it is called or uh, the heterokaryotic mycelium and it is basically of uh, the mycelium of opposite strains so in uh, multinucleate the fungal cells contain more than two nuclei then it is called multinucleate uh, uh, earlier i have uh, discussed about that the, uh, about the septa uh, the the mycelium uh, is separated into different compound uh, compartments uh, by septa so transverse septa occur in thallus of all filamentous fungi to cut off reproductive cells from the rest of the hyphae or to separate off the damaged parts or to divide divide the hyphae 
into regular or irregular compartments of cells. So there are two general types of the septa, that is primary septa and adventitious septa. The septa are of, the septa, the primary septa are formed in the association with nuclear division and are laid down between the daughter cells, daughter nuclei. And the adventitious septa are formed independently of the nuclear division and are especially associated with the change in the concentration of protoplasm as it moves from one part of the hyphae to another. Uh, in septa you can have the, the simple pore or uh, you have the dolly pore septum. So you can see, you can see here in uh, uh, the case of dolly pore septum there is barrel sept cells and uh, uh, barrel sept cells that is barrel sept cells and pore cap is there and the pore cap is also known as parenthosome. We have already discussed about that. The, the, the complex septa, actually in simple septa, there is a simple lining here and there is a cross wall and between the cross wall there is pore from where the, there, is, uh, there is the permeability of, uh, permeability is there and the, uh, it allows only, only the, the limited uh, constituent of the of the protoplasm, uh, whereas in case of the the complex septa, surrounding the septal pore uh, in the septum is a curved flange of wall material, which is thickened to form a barrel sept or cylindrical structure surrounding the pore. pore. The septa of this type are termed dolly pore septa. Earlier I discussed you, uh, and, and and the septa are often overlaid by the perforated cap. Which, which is an extension of the endoplasmic reticulum. This cap is also known as parenthosome or pore cap. So despite these apparent barrier, there is a good cytoplasmic continuity between the adjacent cell. So the septal pore may vary in width from 0.1 to 0.2 micron. And dolly pore septa are found in the monokaryotic and dikaryotic mycelia also. Now you all know that fungus is a, you all know, that fungus is a, the cell of the fungus is a eukaryotic cell and the fungal cell are typically a, and distinguished into, into distinguished characteristics than that of bacteria and algae and the chief component of cell wall appears to be various types of carbohydrates, their mixture as cellulose, pectose, callose, cellulose predominates in the cell wall of the mastigomycotina that is lower fungi while in higher fungi chitin is present. The living protoplast of the fungal cell is enclosed in a cell membrane called plasma membrane or plasma lemma. Cytoplasm contains organelles such as nucleus, mitochondria, Golgi body, a ribosome, vacuoles, vesicles, microbodies, endoplasmic reticulum, lysosomes and microtubules. The fungal nucleus has a nuclear envelope comprising of two typical unit membrane and a central dense area known as nucleolus, which mainly consists of RNA. The, in multinucleate hyphae, the nuclei may be interconnected by endoplasmic reticulum, and uh, vacuoles present inside the cell provide target needed for cell growth and maintenance of cell shape. Besides osmotic function, they also store reserve materials. The chief storage products of the fungi are glycogen and lipid. So, uh, residents, there are some specialized structure uh, that is somatic structure also like rhizoids, rhizomorphs, then sclerosia, then uh, 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 prosenchyma, then pseudoparenchyma. So we will discuss these specialized somatic structure one by one. So basically rhizoid is a short root like filamentous outgrowth of the thallus generally formed in tufts at base of the a small unicellular thalli. Rhizoids serve as anchoring or attachment organ to the substratum and also uh, an organ of absorption of nutrient from substratum. Rhizoids are short, delicate filament that contain protoplasm but no nuclei. Rhizoids are common in lower fungi like chytridiomycetes, oomycetes and zygomycetes. So you can see, you can see the, the rhizoids here. Now, earlier I told you that apresorium, 
basically when a spore germinates the distal part of the spore the, dist, the when the spore germinates the distal the spore germinates into germ tube and distal part of the germ tube uh, produce a bulbous sorium bulbous sorium which is known as apri sorium so apri sorium is a simple or lobed structure of hyper germ tube or a pressing organ from which a minute infection pack minute infection pack this minute infection pack uh, uh, usually grow and enter the epidermal cell of the host it helps germ tube or hyphae to, to attach to the sub surface of the host or substrate these aprisoria are formed from germ tube of rust fungi then podimildu fungi and other fungi in their parasitic or saprophytic stages now hostoria basically hostoria the, you can see uh, that uh, uh, hostoria are a special hyphal structure or outgrowth of somatic hyphae that is sent into the cell to absorb nutrient the hyphal branch set to function as hostorium becomes extremely thin and pointed while piercing the host cell wall and expand in the cell cavity to form a wider simple or branched hostoria so hostoria may be knob like or balloon like in shape and elongated or branched like a miniature root system it may be branched like miniature root system also so in earlier photographs here infection pack from where from where you can see that the it is pressing inside this one is the hostorium so it is knob like it may be branched like miniature root system also now other is the aggregation of aggregation of hyphae or tissues and one is mycelial strand basically mycelial strands are aggregate of parallel or interwoven undifferentiated hyphae which adhere closely and are frequently anastomosed or cemented together and they are relatively loose in case of sclerosium rolfsi growth on the culture medium compared with rhizomorphs so mycelial strand formation is quite common in basidiomycetes ascomycetes and deuteromycetes then rhizomorph rhizomorph is rhizomorph is the aggregation of highly differentiated hyphae with well defined apical meristem a central core of uh, core of larger thin walled cells which are often darkly pigmented the root like aggregation is found in the honey fungus that is armillaria and they grow faster than the mycelial strand they grow the growing tip of rhizomorph resemble that of root tip the fungus may spread underground from one root system to another by means of rhizomorphs then uh, you can uh, you can have the idea about the the progenchyma then uh, pseudoparenchyma so the fung these fungal tissues during the certain stages of their life cycle of the most fungi the mycelium become organized into loosely or compactly woven tissues these uh, organized uh, fungal tissues are called plectenchyma they are of two types that is uh, the plectenchyma are of two types that is progenchyma and pseudoparenchyma when the tissues are loosely woven and the hyphae lie parallel to it, one another it is called progenchyma hyphae lie parallel to another it is called progenchyma while uh, the tissue have dis uh, distinguishable and typical elongated cells Uh, in case of progenchyma in case of pseudoparenchyma the pseudoparenchyma consists of closely packed more or less isodiametric cells of of vascular plant in this type tissue hyphae lose their individuality and are not distinguishable so you can see this in pictures so pictures also so uh, you this one is the rhizomorph uh, i have already discussed this one is the highly branched structure and and th this one is the pseudoparenchyma and this one is the progenchyma so uh, this you can say this one is the elongated cells and like uh, one parallel to one another while in case of the in case of the progen uh, pseudoparenchyma it is uh, isodiametric cells 
and they lose their uh, identity. Now, uh, another structure is estroma, then sclerosia. So, estroma is bas a, basically a compact somatic structure or hyphal aggregation similar to the mattress or cushion on which or in which fructification of fungi are usually formed. So, they may be of various shapes and sizes, hyphal masses like Acer bullae, Esporodokia, which we will discuss uh, later on, pin nodes, etc., are uh, the fertile estromata which bear sporophore producing spores. While Escalerosium, Escalerosium is a resting body formed by aggregation of the somatic hyphae into dense, rounded, flattened, elongated, or horn shaped uh, dark masses. They are thick walled resting structure which contain reserved food. Escalerosia are hard structure resistant to unfavorable physical and chemical conditions. They may contain, they may remain dormant uh, for longer periods of time, sometimes for several years, and germinate on the return of the favorable conditions. So you can see, you can see the structure of astroma and the 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 escalerosia there, which is uh, uh, round like uh, um, grey to black dark uh, uh, structures, uh, which is uh, which is uh, scattered throughout the plate. And this one is the escalerosia in making mycorrhizae. What is mycorrhizae? Basically, this one is the symbiotic association of the fungi with the roots of the higher plants. Many fungi, many plants in nature have mycorrhizal association and mycorrhizal plants increase the surface area of, of the root system for better absorption of nutrient from soil, especially when soil are deficient in phosphorus. The nature of the association is believed to be symbiotic, that is mutualism, non-pathogenic non or weakly pathogenic. There are three, ty there are three types of uh, mycorrhizal fungal association, that is ectomycorrhizae, Indomycorrhizae or uh, uh, endotrophic mycorrhizae or ict endotrophic mycorrhizae. So these are. So you can see, you can see the the increased surface area between the. Uh, is, this one is due to the the mycorrhizal, and it helps in absorption of nutrient, especially phosphorus. Now, after the somatic structure, the somatic structures we have already discussed. Now. Reproduction in fungi. Uh, we will we'll be discussing in, on the reproduction in fungi. So reproduction is basically the formation of new individual, uh, having all the characteristic of typical of a species. The fungi reproduce by means of asexual, sexual, or parasexual reproductions. Asexual reproduction is sometimes called somatic or vegetative. Uh, and it does not involve the union of nuclei, sex cells or sex organs. The union of two nuclei characterizes the sexual reproduction. In asexual reproduction basically, in fungi, asexual reproduction is more important for the propagation of the species. Asexual reproduction does not involve union of the sex organ, uh, that is gametangia or sex cell that is gamete or nuclei. In the fungi, following are the common methods of asexual reproduction. So, in asexual reproduction, it, it may be carried out by fragmentation, and then uh, fragmentation of the mycelium, then fission of the unicellular thalli. So, in fragmentation, actually what happens, mycelial fragments from any part of the thallus may grow into new individuals when suitable conditions are provided, then it is called the through this method, if the, the individual come, then it is called the fragmentation. While in case of fission, it is also known as transverse cell division. The reproduction by this method of fission is, uh, is uh, are in fungi. Uh, fission is simple splitting of the cells into two daughter cells by constriction and formation of a cell wall. It is observed in Cyzosaccharomyces species. And third one is the, is the budding. Budding is the production of a small outgrowth that is called bud from a parent cell. 
and as the bud is formed, the nucleus of the parent cell divides in, and one daughter nucleus migrates into the bud. And the bud increases in size while it is still attached to the parent cell and eventually breaks off and forms a new individual. Then it is called budding. And it, uh, the, it is common in Saccharomyces especially that is aced. Uh, early, uh, now you can see that I have, uh, I have shown you that how the, how the budding occurs. Actually the cell is there and a part of his protrude and then the nucleus uh, of the mother cell divides into two and, and it gets into the budded portion also and the, the bud get enlarged and eventually they break off and this, this way is the, it, is, it is the production of the, the buds. Now other are the, the sclerosia you can find here, you can find here, then rhizomorphs it is also here. Now uh, the fourth way of asexual production is through spores. The production, the reproduction by the production, reproduction by the production of spores is very common in many fungi. The term spore is applied to any small propagative, reproductive, or survival unit uh, which separate from a hyphae or a sporogenous cell and and can grow independently into a new individual. A spore may be unicellular or multicellular. Multicellular spores are mostly with transverse septa and in some cases like general genera alternaria, the spore will have both transverse and longitudinal septa both. They may be, as the, you can say that the shape may be a spherical, oval, that is uh, to ovate, of ovate, pyriform, pyriform means pear shaped and of pyriform mm, that is, that is. Uh, reverse pyriform, uh, ellipsoid, then cylindrical, oblong, elantoid, filiform, these all are the shapes uh, that you can have, the, the spores are uh, having with that kind of shapes. The spores may be motile or non-motile. Uh, if the spores are motile, they are called planospores and if uh, the spores are non-motile, it is called aplanospores. The spores may be thin or thick walled haline to colored, it may be colorless to colored also, uh, a smooth with uh, ornamented or with ornamented walls. Asexual spores. So asexual spores are produced by, the spores are also produced by sexual means and it, it is also produced by asexual means. So in asexual means, sporangia spores, conidia and chlamydo spores are produced and uh, the sporangia spores may be motile that is planospores earlier I told you then uh, non-motile that is aplanospores in simpler fungi the sporangia spores are usually motile and are called zoospores. The sporangia spores are formed in globose or sac like a structure called sporangium and in the zygomycetes and especially in the order mucarels the non-motile asexual spores called aplanospores are contained in globose sporangia surrounding a central core or columella. The sporangia are also known in which there is no columella or where the spores are arranged in a row inside the cylindrical sac that is, that is termed as merosporangia which occurs in mucarels. Zoospore is an asexually produced spore which is motile by means of flagellum or flagella. Zoospore is naked and it is, its covering is only a haloplasm membrane. Normally zoospores are uninucleate and haploid. Zoospores may be a spherical, again, oval, pyriform, opyriform. These are the structures. Zoospores are provided with one or two flagella. The singular is flagella and for its movement in the surrounding film of water. Flagellum is a hair-like or tinsel-like structure that serves to propel the motile cells. They are whipless or tinsel type, already discussed. The whipless flagellum has a long rigid waist composed of all the 11 fibrils, nine, that is 9 plus 2 fibril, fibrillar arrangement and 
a short flexible end formed of the two central fibers only. The tensile flagellum has a rachis which is covered on all sides along the central length with short fibril. So you can see that the in Jewesporangium spores are there, Jewesporangium are released. Here, here it is columella and it is Jewesporangium in, in which Jewesporangium are there. And after getting the maturity of the spore, the the esporangium, the wall of the esporangium dehisces and the spores are liberated. Now, conidio spores. The conidio spores or conidia, singular is conidium, are asexual reproductive structure born on a special spore bearing hyphae that is called conidio force. They are found in many different groups of fungi, but especially in Escomycotina. Basidiomycotina and Deuteromycotina. Conidia may be born singly or in chains or in clusters. They vary from unicellular, that, that is in case of Polytrotrichum, bicellular, uh, that is micro, microconidia of Physeria, and multicellular, that is in case of Sarcospora pastel, pastelosiopsis. So it can be unicellular. Um, bicellular and multicellular, then one celled spores uh, are called emero spores, two celled spores are called didymo spores and multicellular spores are called phragmo spores. So it is, it is didymo spores, emero spores and phragmo spores. As the shape of the conidia, they may be globose, elliptical, ovoid, cylindrical, branched, or a spirally coiled or a star shaped also, a storospores. Uh, the color of the conidia may be haline, that is halospore, to colored, that is pheospore, to pink, green, or dark. It may be pink, green, or dark. In color also, it may be pink, green, or dark colored. Also. So uh, you can see the, the conidiophore uh, and the, the conidiophore, the distal end is swelling on which the conidia are there. And in case of uh, other structure, the, the conidiophore, then metuli, then asterigmata, and on the asterigmata, the conidia are bearing. The next is clamidospores. Clamidospores are basically a thick walled thallic conidium that generally function as resting spore. Terminal or intercalary segment or mycelium may become packed with food reserve and develop thick walls. They are the important organs of sexual survival of soil fungi. When clamidospores are found in between the fungal cells, they are called intercalary clamidospores. And clamidospores produced at the apex are known as apical or terminal clamidospores. So this one is the intercalary clamidospores. So uh, already I have told about you clamidospores and this, this one is the figure of the clamidospore earlier also there. This one is the figure of so with this we end the lecture on asexual reproduction. Thank you students for the present hearing. Thank you.